Polysaccharides are polymers containing large numbers of monosaccharide residues bonded together by glycosidy bonds. They can serve as the nutritional storage of glucose or as the structural form of plants. Starch is made out of two different polysaccharides, amylose and amylopeptin. Amylose is a linear polysaccharide that is bonded together by sugar units between the anomeric carbon number 1 and the second unit of glucose carbon number 4 hydroxyl group, forming an acetal. The glycosidy bond in amylose is similar to that one found in the disaccharide maltose. It is described as, as alpha-1,4 because it's formed by the dehydration from the anomeric carbon from an alpha-glucose and the hydrogen from the second unit on carbon number four. Starch contains two different polysaccharides, amylose and amylopeptin. While amylose is linear, amylopeptin is branch. Depending on the plant species, most starches will have between 20 and 30% amylose and between 70 and 90% amylopeptin. Amylose has about 4,000 units of glucoses and amylopeptin, due to the branches, will have about 10,000 units. While amylose has alpha-1,4 glycosidy bonds, amylopeptin will have both alpha-1,4 and alpha-1,6. To form the branch, the anomeric carbon of an alpha-glucose will react with the free hydroxyl group on carbon number 6 of a second unit. That second unit has already formed the alpha-1,4 glycosidy bonds. Starch has much higher content of amylopeptin than amylose because of the high chances of branches on carbon-6 of glucose's unit. Animals also can store glucose's units in a polysaccharide. Glycogen is the storage of glucoses in skeletal muscles and in the liver. It is also a polysaccharide branched using alpha-1,4 and alpha-1,6 glycosidy bonds. Therefore, it is similar in structure to amylopeptin because it has the alpha-1,4 glycosidy bond and it branches off on alpha-1,6 glycosidy bonds. We can summarize that glycogen and amylopeptin are similar in structures, the difference are that glycogen is found in animals and amylopeptin is found in plants. Besides, glycogen is more branched than amylopeptin. The alpha-1,6 glycosidy bond is taking place every 10 to 12 units, when in amylopeptin is taking place between 30 and 36 units. When sugars are needed in the bloodstream, the ends of glycogens will be released upon hydrolysis by a process called glycogenolysis. Because glycogen is more branched than amylopeptin, it can store more units of glucose in less space. While one molecule of amylopeptin contains about 10,000 units of glucose, one unit of glycogen can contain even a million units of glucose. The third polysaccharide found in plants is cellulose. Since it is the structural part of plants, this is the most abundant organic compound found in the planet. Different than starch, this polysaccharide uses beta-anomers or glucoses. Cellulose 
is a linear polymer of D-glucose residues bonded by beta-1,4 glycoside bonds. While the sugars in amylose and amylopeptin and glycogen forming alpha-1,4 glycoside bonds have the rings in a similar fashion, when it is in the cellulose structures, the glycoside bonds are beta-1,4 and also the ring is rotated 180 degrees. If you see the oxygen in the positions that they are, they are very different than what it was for amylose. That is going to bring more possibilities for hydrogen bonds between these molecules. This brings important practical applications. For example, if you have a small amount of cornstarch and you add water, the starch becomes swollen by water. If you drop a piece of wood in a glass of water, it will keep its shape and most of its physical properties. Cellulose exists in an extended chain conformation because of its beta-1,4 glycoside bonds. That will allow the intermolecular interaction of loss of hydrogen bonds between the oxygens that are the part of the hemiacetol and hydroxyl groups. This property makes cellulose useful as a structural material in plants as well as the industrial manufacture of paper, cardboard, textiles and plastics. Extensive intermolecular hydrogen bonding between adjacent molecules of glucose gives cellulose its great physical strength. Cellulose molecules are bound together in fibrous bundles that exclude large attractive interactions with water. Despite the high content of hydroxyl groups present in cellulose, those hydroxyl groups are involved in hydrogen bonds and will not interact with molecules of water. Here I show how one molecule of glucose can be interacting with two others, preventing molecules of water to access this hydroxyl group. The lack of intermolecular hydrogen bonding imparts only modest physical strength to starch. The amylose and amylopeptin helices are easily solvated by water, which allows rapid hydrolysis to release glucoses. Here we present four chains of cellulose that are held together by hydrogen bonding in the formation of a fiber. They are interacting to one another via hydrogen bonds. Monosaccharides with modified functional groups are components of a wide variety of biomolecules. For example, this is a beta-glucose where the hydroxyl group has been replaced by an amino group. And then the aminoglucose has reacted with an acetyl group to produce a different monosaccharide that now can be included in different structures in membranes and in lipids. The exoskeleton of insects is made out of polysaccharides. For example, the shells of lobsters, beetles, spiders are made out of chitin. This polymer is not made out of simple glucoses, but instead we will see that carbon number two has the acetamido groups in each one of them. Similar to cellulose, chitin has beta-1 form glycoside bonds, and also the, the ring is 180 degrees rotated, having more opportunities for hydrogen bonds making this structure very strong.